In this video, we will be covering poor sign nutrition from weaning to 50 pounds. Nutrition is crucial to the success of any bean, and this is no exception with pigs. One of the key elements to the growth of pigs is a starter phase, weaning to 50 pounds. This is the time when some of the highest stress levels for a pig occurs, and it is of the utmost importance to maintain a positive growth curve as much as possible. To start off with, it is important to know the phases of starter pigs and to be able to know the ingredients and the ration that is desirable for each weight class. Phases of starter pigs. Within the starter pig breakdown, there are three phases that divide this production segment. The first phase starts from piglet weaning to 15 pounds. Phase two starts when they weigh from 15 to 25 pounds. And finally, phase three, the piglets weigh between 25 to 50 pounds. Each stage has nutritional needs that must be met to provide optimal production success. Following is an overview of the individual phases before a discussion on ingredients, diet, and considerations. Phase 1. For the just weaned pig, the first 30 hours can be rough because of the stress from weaning and the transition from milk to a feed product. This stress can cause post weaning lag, which inhibits the growth and production if not managed correctly. However, at the 30 hour mark, 90% of the pigs will have eaten and should have round full abdomens. Intervention measures should be considered after 36 hours and taken after 60 hours. The diet should be complex while formulated without soybean and be made up of 18 to 20% protein and 1.5% lysine. Phase two. In this phase, you might see a slight decrease in performance because of the changes made in the diet like the removal of a substantial part of the milk product previously found in the diet. However, this is short-lived and these changes in the diet are more budget-friendly because of the less complex starter diets. The new ration provides less milk product, eliminates the majority of animal byproducts that are found in the diet for phase one, and ash intake is not as limited. These diets can be either pelleted or meal with a makeup of 17 to 20% crude protein and 1.3 to 1.4 total lysine. Phase three, these diets are very simple diets, yet it is recommended to pad the diet in this stage with more fat than previously found to continue to increase the growth and productivity of the pig as it ages and increase in weight. It may be fed as a pellet or a meal and is primarily grain-based with 17 to 20% crude protein and 1.15 to 1.2% lysine. For piglets in this stage, diet should be devoid of all animal byproducts whey, and lactose because of the adaptation period is over and they no longer have efficient utilization of milk proteins. Ingredients. When feeding starter pigs, regardless of the phase, it is crucial to maintain the highest quality standard because it dictates success. One of the factors in a starter diet is very important to retain the quality of the whey and the ration. The color should be white, no black specks, and never brown. Brown color and whey signifies the caramelization of lactose. Animal byproducts should be spray dried like fish meal, blood meal, and animal plasma. This improves the quality of the proteins and keeps them from becoming degraded, which is vital, especially in phase one. Suggested diet. The following is a formulated ration for each phase of starter pigs. It is important to note that the lysine content and that it decreases a little in every stage. The same for the animal byproducts and whey that is included in the diets. Phase one has large amounts of both, whereas phase two and three both decrease. Considerations. There are two major considerations to keep in mind when feeding any animal. This includes pigs at any age. Fresh feed and fresh water are extremely important and should be taken very seriously. With fresh feed, you will get a greater productivity yield because feed intake, feed efficiency, and health all increase and improve. Fresh water is consistent with all these gains as well and prevents dehydration. Nipple or cup waters are both acceptable. With nipple faucets, put one nipple in for every 10 to 15 pigs. However, it is common with cup faucets to just have one water outlet in a pen. Conclusion. Following these guidelines, you will have higher productivity and less mortality in your starter pigs from a nutritional basis, and your young pigs will flourish and continue to do well in the following growth stages. Thanks and reckon.